Hi, today we're going to go over some past AP exam free response questions that were emailed to me by a classmate of yours. This one is from 1991 BC 6 is the title of it. Take a moment to read the problem and then um, maybe consider timing yourself around approximately 15 to 20 minutes. This is considered to be one of the longer free response questions. Um, so even if you get two of two free response questions um, that you complete in 30 minutes, this would take longer than half. So pause this recording if you'd like, work this out, and then we will go over the solution. Okay, in looking at part A, um, we have that dy dt, which is the rate of growth, so how fast the rumor is spreading, t is time, and y is the proportion of the population that has heard the rumor at time t. So if we solve for y, which is the proportion and what the question is asking for, so take a look over it here, it says what proportion of the population has heard the rumor when it is spreading the fastest. That's what we want. We are told over here in the initial problem that y is the proportion of the population that has heard the rumor at time t. So that's what we want to find is y to answer the question. And we want to find y at the point at which the rate of growth is the fastest. So in a sense, we can do this using optimization. So we're going to find um, when the um, derivative is equal to zero, or in this case, we were given the derivative, so we're finding when the second derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to, um, again, we're going to take that derivative of dy dt, set it equal to zero, and just keep in mind um, in optimization that uh, we have the critical points there um, where we set the derivative equal to zero. So here's our rate of change that is given in the problem, 2 times 1 minus y. In order to prepare that um, expression to derive, I'm going to distribute the 2y to the 1 minus y to make it a little easier. And um, the derivative is, derivative is equal to 2 minus y, I mean it's 2 minus 4y. Then I'm going to set that equal to zero and solve for y, and we will get y equals one half. And that's the only solution for y, and therefore this must be the only critical point and the maximum rate of change. If you need any further details about Part A, please let me know by contact me by email. Now looking at Part B, we are told that for the proportion of people that have heard the rumor at t equals zero is 10%. So to find y as a function of t, which is what we're given, we're going to solve the, the separable differential equation and then use the initial condition t equals 0 is at 10%. So that is going to, let's see, so there's our dy dt. We're going to, we're going to separate the differential equation. So this is just some background information. If if you have not yet gotten to our module on differential equations, um, that is how you will do it. Um, I really do think probably reviewing this module if you've already done it, or if you haven't done this module, I would wait and uh, you know take a closer look at this problem at that time. Also have over here that um, another formula, an integration formula that we're going to need, as well as some information about um, the natural log of e, natural logs and how they relate to E and how those are inverse operations that we can use in manipulating equations to solve for a particular variable. This is exponential growth, of course. And did I have this in here? Okay, so yes, hopefully I did not miss something. Hold on just a sec. Okay, so I got a little ahead of myself and made these uh, edit, uh, revisions here. So I'm going to, as I mentioned, solve the differ differential equation by isolating the y's on the left, the t or the t 
variables, dt, on the right, then integrate both sides, uh, and just as a, I guess, um, in an effort to simplify the left-hand side so that I can integrate more easily, I'm going to split up that 1 over y times 1 minus y into 1 over y plus 1 over 1 minus y. That will then enable me to go ahead and integrate easily and get the natural log of y minus the natural log. Is that supposed to be a minus? Um, is that supposed to be? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, minus 1 minus y. And then on the other side, integrate uh, 2, which is going to be 2t. And then add my constant of integration. We can further simplify that by uh, using this rule over here. You have the natural log of x over y. It's the same thing as the natural log of x minus the natural log of y. I'll give you a second to take a look at those steps in detail. Okay, and if you are wondering why there is a minus sign here, it's because when you integrate 1 over x dx, you're going to get the natural log of x, but you also have to then back out um, whatever the, I guess, integral or differentiate moving backwards there. We did have a minus y. So um, if that's a little confusing, just use a u substitution and say u equals 1 minus y and then carry on from there. If you need that in further detail, just let me know. So we were about to this point, and um, then I'm going to take both sides and do e to the, um, and make those as the exponents. Uh, this will um, eliminate the need for the natural log on the left-hand side. So that simplifies to y over 1 minus y. I can also then take the 2t plus c, as you see over here, when we have uh, anything to the x and, and anything, and th this is not just for e, this is e even if it was like a 2, um, you can take x plus y and separate those into e to the x times e to the y. So that's what I then did down in this step. And with c being a constant, e to the c is just e to some number c. So we can then, as you can see here, bring that back out to the front. And then on the right-hand side, we will have c e to the 2t and y over 1 minus y. So think of it this way when we have e to the c. Um, you know how when we were doing integration, um, like if you multiplied both sides, say, by 2, and you ended up with a plus 2c on the end? Well, it's still just a number. So anytime you do anything to the c, it's still just another constant. So think of it that way. And then... Um, just bringing that, changing that to a C and bringing it to the front of the equation to make it look neater. And I'm not finished quite yet because then I have to use my initial condition. So this is just copying from that last line on the previous page. Y over 1 minus Y equals C E to the 2 E. I need to use my initial condition that was given T equals 0 and 10%. Um, 10%, it says that's the proportion of people of the population that have heard the rumor. So that's going to be plugged in for y at time t. So just plug everything in and solve for t, I mean solve for c, and c equals 1 ninth. Then I go back and plug it in. And it says uh, once y is a function of t. So then I'm just going to take this equation and manipulate it so that I can get the y isolated. 
and you can take a look at the steps and see how I did that if you'd like. And that's not the only method to do that. That's just what came to my mind first. So take a look at those steps or see if you got the same answer using a different method. Um, it would be generally the same method, just maybe in a different order.